Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week what I thought I'd do is talk a little bit about what it looks like to have your Mac Mini server hosted in a hosting environment. Now recently I've been doing some work with uh, Mac Stadium uh, who hosts uh, Mac Mini servers in their complex and so what I thought I'd do is talk a little bit about what that looks like and for those of you that are already doing that or are considering doing that uh, there are some uh, screencasts going up on their site on the differences and how to get started with uh, a Mountain Lion server uh, over there. So let me just talk a little bit about the differences just in case this might be something that you'd want to consider. Now here's a graphic of a typical home uh, internet setup and we've talked about like this before in our screencast where you have your Mac Mini, you've got your home server here and it's behind a router and that router then is attached to your uh, local cable either DSL or your cable modem and then from there uh, everything goes out to the world and everything comes in through all of this and we talked about how this router serves as a firewall uh, that, that sort of protects your server and we talked about how you have to open ports in this to be able to get out to the internet and get in from the internet and talked about all of that. Now the disadvantages obviously of being at home is that you don't have a static IP address usually unless you purchase the business uh, service. Uh, sometimes you'll have uh, you know bottlenecks because of everybody else and bandwidth and those kinds of things and uh, sometimes you know just depending if your server goes down uh, you're not at home to be able to fix it and so then you have to kind of go and figure that out so uh, you know there, there are some advantages to it but there's also a few disadvantages especially for those that are running small businesses and things or you're trying to run websites where this needs to be up all of the time so let me uh, let me show you what it looks like when it's hosted in a hosted environment and so in a hosted environment what happens is you have your server uh, that's in a data center all right and so it's uh, it's got a very reliable infrastructure it's connected directly to uh, the internet pipe and so therefore your uh, your internet speeds are a lot higher your ups and downs and I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute and all of the ports then uh, by default are open so those ports are open to the world and so there's no uh, firewall router uh, that could be seen as a disadvantage but it's not in the sense that then you would run the software firewall on your actual server and then that would uh, protect you that would close ports that you don't want open and allow you to open any ports that you do want open to the world. Uh, the other thing is, is you get a static IP address which means that uh, you can use the same IP for everything you don't have to worry about it changing at any time uh, or another plus with it being in a data center uh, they're always monitoring it making sure everything is is awake is alive is going and uh, because of all the cooling and all that great stuff your server stays on 24 7 so it has some of those advantages where you yourself don't have to worry about whether your server is up or the bandwidth is okay the bandwidth is fine and the server is live all the time as well Okay, let's take a look at the uh, Mac Stadium website just to get a feel for what it would look like to get started uh, with this kind of setup. So here we are at the website. Uh, you'll notice that the basic plan is uh, for one terabyte of monthly bandwidth, which is uh, a lot of bandwidth uh, for most people, uh, for 25 a month. And that's uh, cheaper than if you went to buy a static IP through the business account of your ISP. So it, it actually works out to be a pretty good deal for the hosting. Uh, you could host a website, email, all those kinds of things on your uh, mini as we've already discovered using uh, Mac server and you could do that in their hosted environment and so that that ends up working out pretty well uh, all the way up to an elite plan where you have unlimited uh, monthly bandwidth uh, bandwidth I guess if you're running a, a huge site or a lot of things that'd be 45 a month uh, and then you have the option here where you can choose to send your own mini in and where you kinda set it up yourself and then you mail it into them and they put it in their hosting center or you could rent a mini from them uh, where you would uh, pay a monthly fee and then you could replace uh, the hardware anytime you want when Apple comes out with the newest stuff which kinda makes sense from an economic standpoint uh, especially if you're buying minis on a constant basis this lets them take care of the hardware and you don't have to worry about it uh, or you could buy one from them they have a bunch in stock you can customize it buy it from them and then they'll put it in the in the data center so you have a number of options that you can do and you can customize uh, all of these different uh, pieces out uh, to make it work for you so uh, that, that's kinda how you get started with it now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what it looks like to log into your mini uh, actually in a data center okay to uh, access your server for the first time you would uh, go to the finder up to the go menu and just click connect to server and you'll get this connect to server uh, window up here and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put in uh, VNC colon with two backslashes and then you would put in uh, initially the IP address of your server uh, and I've already got that established so I'm just going to click connect here once you're done you do click connect 
And then what happens is it'll ask you for your username and password for that server. And so let me put that in here. And you can see it's like any normal screen share. And so now, and I, I chose a different background just to show you the contrast. Let me shrink this down here so you can see it. So now I am uh, remotely uh, screen sharing with uh, a server that's in a hosted environment. And so uh, here I am on the server. Uh, everything works fine. I could full screen this uh, if I wanted to and work on it just like I'm sitting in front of it. Uh, it would be similar to if you're on your laptop at home and you, uh, you know, screen share uh, into your server upstairs and you're working on it on your laptop as if you're sitting right in front of it. And I know a lot of you will run, run your uh, server's headless and stuff like that anyway. Uh, but, uh, but anyways, that's what it's like. And so you've got all of the access that you need. Okay, now let me show you, uh, again, some of the advantages. Obviously, one of those advantages is speed. Uh, that's one of the things that you get with a server. So let me just pull up speed test here. And so what I'm going to do is begin the speed test. And so let me just click that so you get an idea for how fast uh, the servers are. And again, it's hosted in Atlanta. So you're going to see here that uh, the speed far surpasses uh, anything that I'm getting at home. Uh, to even come that close is uh, pretty incredible on the download speed there. You can see the ping was uh, 4 milliseconds, which is pretty incredible as well. And what's even more impressive is the upload. And so if you imagine uploading files and how long it can take for backups and things like that, you can see right here that the, uh, the upload speeds are, uh, are pretty incredible as well. So that when it's done, I, I've never seen these, anything close to these results uh, at home. So that is one of the advantages because you've got your mini hosted in the server environment. It's directly connected uh, to the pipe, so to speak, and so you're getting the best speed you can possibly get with your server. And so that makes things go a lot faster and a lot more smoothly. So that is one of the advantages. Another thing is you can run uh, your server. Let me just show you this. Uh, Mountain Lion server runs uh, from the Mac Mini server remotely. And so a lot of the things that you do with server are things where you log in anyway and things where you connect and stuff like that. And so you can actually just run your server remotely like this. Know that it's always on. Know that you can always connect to it. Have a static IP address so that it's the same IP address. You don't have to worry about that IP ever changing or anything like that. Uh, you're not paying any more for it. Uh, then it's included in the $25 hosting fee. Uh, so you don't have to go to a business plan on your your home uh, internet service. Uh, so it really works out well. Now obviously some of the things in the setup are a little different and as I explained to you earlier the fact that there is no uh, router that you're uh, working with. Again, there there is obviously some kind of um, a connection there to the data center, but they leave all the ports open because they don't know how you want to use it. So basically what you're doing more or less is closing ports as opposed to keeping them all open. And as I said before, and we've done this in another screencast, uh, you could use ice floor uh, firewall uh, to basically open the ports that you want and close the ones that you don't want. And so the difference is you're just using your, your software firewall instead of your router as I, as I told you earlier uh, but it works quite well and it really uh, work, works great uh, obviously you want to be careful that you don't shut down things like screen sharing uh, like I'm doing right now I'm using VNC to get in there uh, or VPN if you want to VPN in and remote login uh, you have remote login there or SSH which I covered a few weeks ago uh, again it's a safety protocol just in case for some reason you accidentally shut yourself out of screen sharing uh, by close you know accidentally not checking this you still have a way to get in uh, in the back end uh, so it just kind of gives you that and the other thing is, is you never really shut this off uh, or anything like that uh, because once you shut it off well then someone's gonna have to you have to physically hit the power button and uh, so you might need somebody to help you do that could get yourself locked out of your server if you do get look locked out though they'll be able to uh, you know start it for you remotely that's what they're there for but uh, those are just some tips on things to consider well, let me just put this down uh, again, like I said before, uh, you know, uh, you can operate uh, OS 10 server from here, but there are differences in some of the things you need to consider with that uh, in a hosted environment. And so uh, I've been working uh, with Mac Stadium uh, doing some tutorials to help you out on that. Let me just pull up their website for a second. And so if you go to their uh, blog, and uh, let me just go to the blog itself. If you go over to the blog, and you'll see there's a hosted uh, OS 10 server series here. And uh, in here, I've got some tutorials uh, that we're putting up to help you uh, get your server set up in a hosted environment. And so that way, uh, if you do get lost, uh, you've got a place to go to be able to figure this stuff out and uh, take a look at it. Well, that's all I have for this week. Uh, I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.